What's up, guys? It's the Faruqi Bros back with another video. And today for you guys, we're going to be talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. It's also the first official uh, podcast discussion of the cinema debate era. So we're excited for you guys to join and continue to be on this journey with us. Uh, so No Way Home just came out a couple of days ago, already breaking records in just in its first two days. Uh, at the time of recording, it's already made $100 um, on in its first day. Uh 50 million in Thursday night previews. So this movie is doing just about the numbers of Avengers Endgame. And honestly, if it wasn't a pandemic, I think we all know it might be doing better than Endgame. So it's just that kind of movie. Uh, we're going to be getting into full spoilers of No Way Home. So if you have not seen it and you want to go in fresh, this is the main only warning I'm going to be giving. Um, we're jumping right in with full spoiler territory from here on out. Um, you know what? I'm going to change it up. I'm going to start with me first on this one. Uh, first of all, my review is available on Rotten Tomatoes in a written format, non-spoiler. So if you want to read it, it's on Rotten Tomatoes. It's on cinemadebate.com. Always available for you guys to read. Um, but if you have read it, then you know that I gave this movie five stars and I called it the best movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, and that's for three main reasons. The first reason is better writing uh i think especially for the homecoming trilogy uh writing has always been something we felt that was a little out of character for spider-man there were a lot of faults in john watts's directing that i felt that didn't fully click with audiences this movie erases all of those issues and um brings a movie where you connect with peter parker as an individual and the closest comparison i can make in my head is that every other movie with spider-man when you go into it you think oh how cool is it that Spider-Man is in the MCU? But this time around, it's more that look how Spider-Man has elevated the MCU. It's like it's it's improving it rather than just being another cog in the bigger machine. Um, and also, and again, spoiler warning, I'm going right into it now, uh, seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, something we've talked about over the whole year between the leaks and the rumors and all that stuff has finally come true. And honestly, um, I'm going to give Giannis in a second because you're the one who said it, you know, like, uh, the fear of are they going to do it right? I think that all those fears have been put to rest with this movie. Um, and I think they handled everything perfectly. Uh, in my opinion, the best Marvel, uh, be, the best MCU movie and right up there for the best Marvel movie of all time. And let's be honest, best superhero movie of all time. It's in that discussion. So um, all high praises for me. Um, I can't wait to see it again. Uh, but that's what I'm thinking right now is my first reaction. Zian, how was your first reaction to this movie? My first reaction is obviously same, very similar to yours. Obviously, just seeing Toby and Andrew come back and just the writing, like you said, was just on another level compared to what we've seen before with Homecoming and especially Far From Home, which tend to be more on the more younger, more comedic, more lighthearted tone. And this one, they're just throwing Spider Man straight into the ringer. And like he goes through a lot. Obviously, we see Aunt May's death, which is a huge turning point for this character. And like you never saw him go through like, such a personal struggle before just seeing that just helps with his growth as Spider-Man helps for his arc as a character and really propels him forward. And then seeing Toby and Andrew come back and really guide him and show him that, yeah, we've all gone through a sacrifice. We lost uncle Ben, you lost on may, you know, we, but this is what, this is what comes with the job. This is what comes with being Spider-Man and with great power comes great responsibility. We finally got that line as well. So just everything, I think they hit every possible note, you could have to make this such a perfect Spider-Man movie and really bring everybody, all the Spider-Mans and all the generation of viewers who grew up with Toby or grew up with Andrew or the newcomers who just grew up with Tom Holland Spider-Man. You bring them all together for this one amazing event film and it didn't feel cheap. It didn't feel like it was just hearkening on nostalgia alone. You felt that, okay, yeah, there is Andrew, there is Toby, but this is Tom Holland's story and this is his arc to go through and they did not take away from that. And he obviously, I don't know, all of us could hear that it was his best performance as Spider-Man by far. And with that, and then plus the villains, everybody was just perfect. And I think with the story, they set him up finally to just be the perfect, purest Spider-Man. And now if they continue on with him, which I hopefully they do, you can set him to have like Spider-Man two level films where it's like, yeah, this is a pure Spider-Man. This is not being barred down by the MCU or any of those kind of strings. So now you should just pure Spider-Man, perfect and set up to be like the best version of him possibly and maybe the best of them all time for Spider-Man. 
I think the, the point you made about uh, the three generations coming together is always uh, crazy to me. But I feel like no other superhero could you put it off to this magnitude. Um, you know, for us, the four of us, you know, um, and maybe Samir is the youngest, so to be least affecting him. But I think to some degree it still does if you can count Spider-Man 3. But, you know, Toby is our childhood. You know, our first, in many ways, our first interaction with the live-action superhero on film is Toby Spider-Man, even before Christian Bale's Batman, you had Toby Spider-Man. And that's the first like glimpse we got into superheroes on film. And then as we all went into our teenage years, we got Andrew. And then it's like almost perfect. Like the arc that Andrew's going through resonates for us as teenagers as we're growing up as well. And then Tom comes in, the youngest Spider-Man, but we get him when we're uh, in our 20s. We're, in our, we're entering our adulthood and we get Tom. And, and, it, and we connect to it either in a different way or not as much. But this movie, it just, it feels like, you bridge it all together and you just appreciate Spider-Man as a character more. And I don't know if you felt the same way. How was your thoughts when you came out of this one? Yeah, no, I think that that's, that's what made this movie um, great is that it just connected three generations um, that weren't connected before. And I think that, I think like before going into it, there was always, there was always, um, you know, some fear with John Watts directing. I know I mentioned that a few times on the podcast, and to be honest, um, he hit it out of the park. Uh, and I'm sure that, like, a lot of things go into it. I'm sure that there were so many people behind the scenes that helped. Uh, but I just think, like, just even technically, like, when you look at it, and don't really say this a lot for Marvel movies, but even technically, it's, it's a very well-made, like, well-paced. The score is amazing. All the performances were pretty good. Like, even... The performances, like even Ned, like such a small performance in the movie, but it was good. Like it was executed well. Uh, usually we hated, we hate the quips, but in this one they worked. Um, the banter between the three Spider-Men was perfect. Um, Green Goblin, obviously, you brought back uh, an amazing actor, so he did amazing. So like just every point that you would want, and even a technically looking at it from a technical standpoint, is there in the movie. Um, great visuals great cgi you can't really ask for more like that's pretty much it was pretty much the most perfectly executed um spider-man movie and and obviously in the marvel universe uh i agree with Charles. i think it's i think it's the best i know people will bring up infinity war and the other um movies i think that it obviously is a different movie and one thing that i think this one has going for it that um kind of will get it kind of shows how good tom holland is is that um, Andrew Garfield's in it, Tobey Maguire's in it, but they didn't outshine the main guy. Um, it's still a story about, very much about Tom Holland's Spider-Man, um, and just the sacrifice that he gives uh, at the end to basically go from the life that he's had so far in the MCU of being coddled and whatnot to basically starting from zero. He's starting from scratch. So I just think like the whole the whole movie, just the whole vibes, it was too good. And the point you made about uh, Tom Holland's performance in particular, I think, resonates the most with me uh, because it's true. I mean, when we when we were talking about this movie, we used to make uh, jokes that, you know, if Andrew and to Toby were in this movie, then no way home. It doesn't matter. Like, and they are very important and crucial to this movie. But um, we, for even us, Tom Holland was the afterthought. He was the secondary, the third reason, if not the fourth reason to go see this movie. Um, he was not a priority. When you come out of it, suddenly you're like, this guy has potential to be the GOAT. Like, put one more, put one more trilogy on him where it's actually on level. And he comes out with six movies plus three, four Avengers movies. You can make a case. Yeah, he, he's, he has the resume now that you can put him in GOAT status for best Spider-Man. And that's something that I never thought going this movie would get. I thought, okay, we saw the leaks. We had a good feeling the the big two, uh, Toby and Andrew, are going to be in this. But I thought they're going to come. They're going to outshine them. It's going to be in a cameo, but it's going to just seeing them is going to carry the movie. But no, Tom Holland's um, performance is so endearing and so heartbreaking that you end up being like, okay, this is the real deal. And I respect him as Spider-Man um, on a level equal to which uh, of his predecessors. Uh, so Samir, I know, would you agree with, I mean, we're all been showering praise. So uh, do you agree with that? Or how do you feel coming out of this movie? As the resident yeah, Spider-Man fan, I agree completely. I think it was uh, it was a great movie. I think another thing that I was skeptical about that we all were that uh, none of the villains were really Tom Holland's villains. They were all the other Spider-Man villains. So we thought, okay, they're gonna bring the other Spider-Man back. They're obviously gonna outshine. Um, but I think I think this Green Goblin. I mean, he became Tom Holland's villain now. He's he's one of Tom Holland's villains, and he's one of the best MCU villains too now. 
and uh, I mean that really says a lot about how how good Willem Dafoe was as as Green Goblin, the same Green Goblin that was in the two thousand two Spider Man movies. Um, a great great villain back then. He's a great, he's a great villain now, and uh, yeah, it was great overall. Willem Dafoe, I think you know. Sometimes we, we make jokes about like, especially when I remember when Tony Stark died. We we were saying that you know they can't recast Tony and you can't do it again. And honestly, after seeing this guy do it twice, you can't do Green Goblin for a long time now. Like, and if you do, the bar is set too high. Like, it's like the Heath Ledger bar that took 20 years, not 20, it took 10 years for Joaquin Phoenix to give a puncher shot and showing that I can do a good performance almost as equal to him. And even then, people always go back and say Heath Ledger did it amazing. I think Willem Dafoe, after these two movies, not only is he the best Spider-Man villain of all time on film to me. And before I give that to Doc Ock, actually, I thought Doc Ock was the best um, after Spider-Man 2 and just given Defoe's first film, which I think is also great. I think after these two movies, I'll put him at the GOAT level for Spider-Man villains. And you can make case he's up there for greatest superhero movie villain of all time. Uh, the list is very small uh, when you put him up there. It's, you know, it's, it's Ledger, Joaquin, Defoe, like it's it could be literally that short the list, and and you can see if you want to put in Thanos somewhere, you want to put in some other guy somewhere, but I think those three um are are there for me. So I definitely agree with Smear there. The Defoe was great. All the villains were great. Um, and I, again, just the story wise, it was all perfect. And Zion, you can speak on this point because you said it a lot of times. So I'm gonna let you just make that point. The scale of difference from Far From Home to No Way Home is insanity. So like, uh, tell me about that. Yeah, it is just day and night. I know, like, me and Charles, we actually saw some Far From Home was playing on TV yesterday. And it is just, one, it doesn't even feel like a Spider-Man movie. It's just so removed from anything that Spider-Man is and Spider-Man should be as a character that it's like, who made this? Is this like a, a fan-made, poor rendition film or something like that? Because it's honestly jarring that the same director went from that to No Way Home. I don't know if it's because of... Um, just the inclusion of Toby and Andrew, he knew that he has to bring in some of those thematic cues of the old films, or it's just because tonally this is a more serious movie and a lot more stuff happens um, darker tone-wise to Tom Holland Spider-Man than it did in the previous film. And it's just like, yeah, like this is just on another level completely. And for me personally, I know we're probably going to go to the rankings later, but Farm Home is like the worst Spider-Man movie in my opinion. And to go from that to now this, which is could be one of the best or top two at least or the best best spider-man movie of all time is just um it's amazing to see and honestly i'm really happy for him because i've always loved tom holland's spider-man just as a character so now seeing him in a story like this where they're finally taking him seriously they're giving him a true arc to go through and actual growth i think it was amazing for his character and really does sit out that okay now like Shaw said that now there is like yeah if you do another trilogy with him you have set him up to just be the GOAT Spider-Man if you continue this level of filmmaking with Tom Holland Spider-Man. I completely agree. Normally, the last segment we do in a reviewed video is we all give our scores. But I think um, if you follow us on Twitter, which you should, all our at names are right there. Let me just move my banner so you can see it one time. There you go. Um, we've all given it five stars. So I think it's going to be moot point to go around the room and say, uh, for all to say five stars. But instead, I'm going to say, what's our favorite scene? So let's talk about... One scene, this is our favorite scene of this movie uh, so far. Uh, who wants to go first? Samir, what about you, man? What was your favorite scene of this movie? There were a lot of good scenes. I mean, I would say the scene of them all swinging together, but I'm actually going to go with the scene of Tom Holland standing in the rain. I think that was the best scene. It was the most emotional scene, and the cinematography was going crazy. The music was going crazy, I think. Uh, I think it was, it was like a character-defining moment. I'm actually muted. It was one of the goaded Spider-Man scenes, period, in my opinion. Uh, so definitely that's up there. Umar, what about you? Favorite scene of No Way Home? Um, I'm not sure. There's, It's a hard choice to make, and that shows how good the movie is. But if I had to choose, the swinging was great. I think I think the scene where they're talking to, to um, where the three Peters are talking, and they're kind of like, he's to, um, Toby Wire starts talking about how like he he lost Uncle Ben. It was all his fault. Um, and then uh, Andrew Garfield, Spider Man, is like, Yeah, I lost Gwen Stacy. It was all my fault. Can't forgive myself. Stop pulling my punches. Um, they had that scene. Um, I think that scene was really 
uh, crazy to see just because like they all they all have the, and it was like written really well because like at the end the thread line was with great power comes great responsibility and so they 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 fit it all in like one scene together I think that's I can't say it's my favorite because there is I was I was gonna say the rain thing but then Samir freaking sold it so it's fine but if I had to choose something else because Samir chose the rain stuff right. I'm gonna have to choose uh, I'm gonna have to choose them just talking to each other yeah, and great thing is those two scenes actually flow perfectly thematically. I mean, it's him standing in the rain, then him going back to Queens if, to his high school, and then the two Spider Men literally kind of pep talking him back to the fight. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, like they they one thing they did like in a really sick way is like the other Spider Men actually got like not redemption because they didn't need redemption, but they got like their their moments. You know what I mean? Like Andrew Garfield Spider Man saves MJ. He has his moment. I think the word is closure. They all got closure in their eyes. Yeah, and then Tobey Maguire Spider Man actually had a few six scenes Great with moments, Doc, yeah. and then he had the scene with um, like saving Sp- the other Spider Man from like in the right. end, killing the guy with the glider. That right. was it's just too good. Great moments, yeah. Zian, what about you? Favorite moment? Well, like Samir stole Umar's favorite. Umar stole my favorite because I think yeah, the scene where they're on the high school rooftop and they're just talking as like pure Spider-Man characters. Just like, this is what it means to be Spider-Man. And this is what you have to go through. Like, this is what we all went through. And it's like, the fight never ends regardless because with great power comes great responsibility. So it's like, yeah, we all went through these kind of events. We all went through a lot of downfalls, but we are Spider-Man and this is the job. This is what we have to do. And we have to get out there and help people and help save people. And they did just that. And I think it was really such a great moment. Like Umar said, the writing was really great in that scene where they really were like, yeah, these are, they're like, like Shra said, they're like pep talking or mentoring and basically that, yeah, we are veterans. We've been through this before. So it's like, we get what you're going through. And then they all, and like Toby completed the line when he was saying great power because we responsibility. So it's like, yeah, they're all as Spider-Man, you're like fated to go through all these troubles. But it's like, what makes Spider-Man so special is that even through that, you don't lose yourself and you just still come back into the fight. And I think that scene on top was just, so sincere and something you rarely ever see in the MCU in totality, not even in the Spider-Man MCU films, just that a sincere moment where there are no jokes, there are no laughs. It was just three Spider-Man, three heroes. They know what they've been through and they're trying to help this younger Spider-Man wrestle with the loss that he just had. All the scenes you guys mentioned are in my top scenes. And in fact, some of them are my favorite scenes. Um, you Common theme, which is one of my favorite scenes, is the three Spider-Man. It's like, it's so wholesome and brought me so much joy. The scene where are like, okay, you're Peter one, you're Peter two, I'm Peter three. All right, let's go. And then the camera pans on the running shot. They're running and they jump and all of them, they do their signature swing. And then Tom throws his web and they both catch it in the momentum. It's like everything a fan could want from Spider-Man is happening in that moment. And I couldn't really believe my eyes. I'm like, how are we seeing this? Like every even Endgame when the whole group is standing together, it's like, wow, culmination of 10 years, but I saw it coming. This, even though we had the leaks of these three Spider-Man, for some reason, the feeling I thought I would have, I didn't see it coming. And for that reason, it's my favorite. But um, because it was already mentioned, actually it wasn't mentioned, but that is my favorite. My second favorite, when we hinted at it, I'm just going to expand it before we wrap up, is the scene where in a rage, Tom Holland is about to kill Green Goblin. He is punching that guy. He's taking him out. He's giving him, he, he got hands. Like, you know, so he's just giving it to him. And then finally with the same glider that he's fated to die with anyways, he's going to go and stab him to death. Um, and there's this moment, this is brilliant acting on both of their parts. But of course, Toby's the one who grabs the glider and stops him. But Tom is in such a rage that he's actually trying to stab Toby. And I was like, they're trying things. Like, this is a really good um screenplay this screenplay is perfect like there's no words there's no script but what tom is doing the emotion in his eyes is just perfect beat for beat for beat perfectly done um and then obviously he stops and he calms down and then let's be honest all of our hearts stop for a second when green goblin stabbed toby i was like nah you know couldn't be him you know anyone but him (laughs) but yeah that um that's i think all of our favorite moments and i'm sure in future videos we're going to keep talking about this movie we're going to talk about what's next for toby uh, for tom holland rather and even what's next for the other two i think maybe it might be a little premature to say that their sagas are completely over either so it'll be very interesting to see what happens next what did you guys think about spider-man no way home just still one thing we didn't mention 
What, what did you not mention? The post credit scene. Uh, okay, so because I know this is pretty divisive between all of us, but like, let me just get it to really quickly. For me, I think does it echo? But for me, I think we saw in the post credit scene that Venom, like Tom Hardy's Venom, they got transported back to their universe, but they left a little piece of the symbiote in the Spider-Man um, in the MCU, current MCU universe. So I think that was a perfect way, in my opinion, to handle it. I know it would have been fun to see Tom Hardy's Venom in it, but I think if they really want to do a great symbiote Spider-Man arc, because I know a lot of people did not like how Raimi's Spider-Man handled it, for one way or another, we're not getting to that, but I think if they want to really do a pure best version of symbiote Spider-Man, I think this is the best way to handle it, because now when Tom comes into contact with the symbiote, he won't know what it is. I know Tobey Maguire mentioned that he followed like an alien thing, but that's all he knows. He doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know what it looks like. He doesn't know what it does. So now that that little Easter egg is there, I think we can set it up to do uh, for Tom Holland to have the best symbiote Spider-Man on film. I'll let Samir handle that one. I mean, Samir, do you agree with that as the best decision, or do you think they should have kept Tom Hardy in this thing? You know, I think they wish the two post-credit scenes personally to do this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was the best decision because. They they put him in from they put him in in one post credit scene then they just took him out the, the second post credit scene. It was yeah. Weird. He was he was in the he was in the MCU for like uh, a total of under a minute. Which is kind yeah. of weird, <laughs> I guess. He was he had, he had a thirty second total cameo in the MCU between two post credit scenes. Uh, but I I do think he they are gonna clash in the future regardless. They are gonna clash. That's for sure. Just not yet. I think they're they're probably gonna want to do symbiote saga first. So like I was saying. Uh, what do you guys think about Spider-Man No Way Home? Let us know uh, your thoughts in the comments below. There'll be a couple more videos, especially, uh, in, including an evolution of Spider-Man. So hope you guys enjoy it. From myself, from Zion, from Umar, and from Samir, we're the Faruqi Bros. And we'll see you next time.